Thank you very much. Um, welcome to Belfast. It's a beautiful city. I don't come from here. I come from London, as you can tell from the accent. Um, as, uh, as introduction went, I am not Elizabeth Lawler, um, but I work for the same company she does, and uh, I used to be, my background is I used to be the CTO at places like Bank of America, BT, and UBS, and that included a lot of security operations and, and various other things. So the, the talk of today is to uh, kind of give you some insightful background and experience on the developments around things like what we're now calling DevSecOps. So it's the combination of DevOps and security. And particularly, it's about how to maintain or at least develop job security in a rapidly changing world. Um, I will try to run through these slides pretty quickly. I have a very short number of slides. If I get to the end and we have time for questions, I'll take them here. If not, I'll take them outside. So the question that we're posing today is essentially how to maintain or create job security in, a, in an emerging world, in a developing world. And the two key developments that I want to raise or highlight here is that security has always been a back office function traditionally. It has always been thought about as, in some cases, an afterthought. But as a number of previous presenters have already talked about, you know, developers are taking over the world, applications are taking over the world. And consequentially, applications and in future, it's happening now, but more so in the future, uh, machines in the form of Internet of Things, you know, more advanced computers, possibly even AI and machine learning and so on. These are going to become consistent components in a security context. And you can't talk to a machine, generally speaking. Right? A human being, you can go and have a conversation with a machine, you can ask it nice things, but generally you don't get very far with it. Whereas a human, you can, you can use biometrics and various other things to control and manage behaviours, and you can get quite a lot of insightful stuff about that. But nevertheless, companies, especially some of the businesses that I've worked with in the past, are always looking to deliver and create more better automation, uh, better, faster things, better, faster ways of doing things. And that necessitates, if you're going to do it correctly, putting security in line in all of that. Right? So security is no longer an external thing. It's no longer a parallel thing that you do on the side. It's no longer something you do at the end. It's something you do throughout the process, especially if you're going to do DevOps correctly. So in that context, how do you maintain security? How do you maintain job security? Right? How do you make sure that as a security specialist and as somebody that pervades or creates or develops security technologies, you remain relevant in that rapidly changing world? And it is a changing world because of things like media, because of, of raising awareness in newspapers and so on. Now more people know about security. Um, also, there are more security incidents occurring, whether people like to admit that or not. Consequently, these two things add up to a point where you, know, you can walk down the street today. Most people understand some degree of security of, in terms of relative terms. If you go to corporations, especially the big guys, especially the regulated industries like financial services, healthcare, and so on, regulators expect the executives in those businesses to know about security. Not necessarily become security experts, but have security as part, part of their core responsibilities. And this means that you're seeing a rise in the number of real CISOs that exist in organizations being elevated into board level, possibly beyond roles, and so on. So they're no longer back office functions, no longer backroom off functions, and so on. So this creates uh, essentially a, di a divergence of demand that has to be addressed. The first one you see on the left-hand side is how do you continue to deliver value? Uh, the, the synopsis of the talk that Elizabeth wrote was purely around focusing how do you change the context of a security conversation from one of pure protection and, and pure, uh, you know, pure stoppage or whatever you want to call it through to one where it's a function of business development and business enablement. Right. Security now needs to be an enabling function. You cannot stand there in a boardroom and say, uh, you can't do this anymore because, 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 because business people want to do business, and you can't stop that. Right? Otherwise, your business goes out of, out, of, out of business. So the first one is delivering value, and you've got to be able to deliver value in a way that makes sure that you are doing something that is in line with what the business wants to do and appropriate for what the business wants to do. Um, I remember conversations with CISOs, some of which I've ended up having to fire in the end, because essentially their entire role in life was to stop the business doing business. Right? You cannot take an online business offline. That's just dumb. The second one is build trust. Security is a complicated topic. It is a specialist topic. If you apply yourselves to it and you become a specialist in that world, you'll be treated as gurus, specialists, you know, people, learned people, etc., in these organizations you will be held somewhat higher than, than traditional IT guys in most respects because you are operating in a really murky, you know, weird world. Right? 
The point with that is you've got to get out from that world and you've got to start having conversations in business language with business people. You've got to start having that building, building that trust with people. And that means that you've got to understand business language. It is no longer sufficient to say that I have a security problem and I think we need to do this, that, and the other in technical terms because the business people just don't care. Their job is to make money. Right? And as far as they're concerned, any type of conversation along those kind of lines is going to result with you effectively getting, being fired or moved sideways. So that results in a situation where, as a security specialist, you need to do two things, right? and it's a duality. Most people are very, very good. Security specialists are generally very good, and I've had the privilege of hiring some of the smartest people on the planet to do this. They're great at security side, but they're not so good at the enablement side. Right? How do you place security in a context uh, with a language, um, with a set of conditions, with a set of expectations that actually enables business? How do you make sure that people are doing things securely? Nobody in their right mind today would develop an insecure system. Now, that's a statement I make, but I would also state at the same time that very few people understand what that means. Right? Lots of people say they build secure systems, but generally they don't. They think about security second secondarily in favor of things like UX and various other things. So you've got to be able to secure a business, and you've got to be able to enable business at the same time. And in a world of DevSecOps, that becomes very, very critical. Because forget about security for a second. If you're talking about DevOps, DevOps is all about automation. It's all about taking cost and overheads out of an organization. It's about speeding up the delivery time frame from an application concept all the way to application delivery. And that's without throwing in methods like Scrum and other things into it, which add additional levels of complexity. So your change cycle now becomes much quicker. When I started my career 20-odd, five years ago, the change cycle of typical project was somewhere between three and six months. Chain cycles in my last role was up to two weeks right, or less. Sometimes days, we were continuously developing. So you've got to be able to put security in that context. You can't say to a person, oh, you have a problem, but it's going to take me two weeks to figure out what the problem is. Right? That's a bad conversation to have because you're taking money away from the business. Money away from the business means the business doesn't do as well, which means as an employee of the business, you've just effectively shot yourself in the foot. There's a new term that I want to introduce today. Most people understand ROI in terms of return on investment, but there's a new term that most people, at least in the executive businesses, especially where businesses are in large scale or have some kind of stakeholder situation like shareholders and so on, or they're in, in regulated businesses, it's essentially the, the um, risk of loss. <coughs> and in simple terms, what risk of loss means is it's okay to define what the risks are. But you've also got to understand exactly what the potential losses are as a result of the execution of that risk. And you've got to present it in business terms. You cannot simply say that I have a risk uh, and then the business guys have to figure out what that risk represents in business terms. You've got to present it in simple terms to them. Otherwise, you've just lost their, their, uh, their focus and their attention. And what you've done is alienated them. The point is, if you want to be a valued function in the, in the development of DevOps and the delivery of far rapid application security and so on, you've got to get those two blends mixed correctly. Because if you don't, one will overbalance the other and commercial, guarantee you, commercial decisions will always overtake security conditions, generally speaking. The other thing to think about are things like, um, you know, essentially the, the, the way you present the context of a security issue, the way you present security tools and investments, et cetera, has to be done in the, in the development of the whole DevOps cycle. You can't just say, I want to insert a security condition here, here, and here in, in the context of a DevOps life cycle, because those kind of things don't make sense unless you figure out what goes before and what goes after those situations. You also have to do it in such a way that developers, as the previous uh, presentation was talking about, developers get the ability to use security functionality as a developer. Asking a developer to think about security stuff is not going to work, generally speaking. But if you make the security functions part of the development tool sets, um, part of the, the ADLC context in terms of the infrastructure that they use, the platforms that they use, and so on, then they're going to get those functionality, those elements, by default. And if you do that, they won't get in your way, you won't get in their way, and there'll be no arguments. Right? Everything will go fine. The last one, sorry, another thing that I want to go through is language. Um, I talked about it several times before. Secure, you know, we have to admit that security world has a defined language. 
right? and I've, I've forced myself to learn that over time because I've had to hire these, you know, these type of people and work with these type of people. Um, so um, in my previous role at BT, we were lucky enough to, to acquire the Counterbain business, which was the Bruce Schneier organization. And I spent almost three years learning, sitting beside Bruce Schneier and kind of getting brainwashed, um, trying to learn the language, get myself immersed in that language. So, and it was tough. I was a pure IT guy, he was a pure security guy, and trying to meet the minds was, was a very hard thing to do. But in the end, we did it. And you know, the key thing that I would say there in terms of learning is both terminology and language are as important as each other, but they have contextual relevance. You cannot go into a boardroom and start throwing technical terms around because the board people will not understand you. Business people will not understand you. Generally speaking, developers will not understand you because that's not their role in life. But you've got to present those kind of things with an idea of what the risks will be, uh, what the value of doing these kind of pieces of work will be, what the value of delivering these kind of security functionalities will be. Again, if you make it transparent and you make it part of the actual automation process in DevOps, then there should be no issue. But language is very, very important. Um, not getting the language correct or not thinking about language when presenting security functionality or developing security processes is something that will get people into trouble. This is something that's an interesting chart. Uh, we, in preparation for this presentation, we, we went to Google and uh, we, you know, we did a search on DevX, DevSecOps as a term and that's what came up. So essentially what you'll see is you know, from 20, 2012 to 2014 roughly, there were you know, quite a number of inquiries but not huge in terms of the total search volumes. There was a spike in 2013 and what we, can found, what we found with that was that was related to a number of uh, fairly well publicized breaches of security. And then from 2014 onwards what you'll see is a massive increase up until current day where the, what 100% represents is essentially that's the, the maximum search return that you can find in, in Google. So basically you, people will go in and search and they'll find at least one article in reference to Google which has been actually specifically uh, determined to be relevant to that context. That's how Google measures these kind of things. So don't think of it as 100 searches per se. It's 100% it's relevance in terms of a search return. So what you're now finding is if you put DevSecOps into Google at least, uh, you will find very, very good materials on what that means, despite the fact that actually it's a relatively new term. And DevOps, DevSecOps really is simple as DevOps plus security. Right? Whether you put one behind the other, it doesn't really matter. But it also means two other things. It's the maturity of the, uh, the, um, the uh, stakeholders. Right? They are still maturing. They're not mature yet. You've got to take them through that journey. You've got to explain it to them. And then the, third, the other thing that's interesting is that there's still a lot of confusion out there. Lots and lots of people talk about DevSecOps, but actually don't know what it means. Right? They don't really understand the context. They don't really understand the, the, the implications of what the combination of those two things means. Uh, again, I was involved in a, a project about six months ago where this fairly large software startup uh, was going through the process of developing their MVP application. And their idea of DevSecOps was DevOps plus security at the end. Right? So they hadn't even done security through the Agile process, despite what they were saying. So what does that mean? Um, it means this, basically. It means that You've got to understand the things that you know as a specialist, as a, as, a, you know, as a key person in an organization that knows security and so on, as a security technologist or as a security consultant, whatever. You've also got to understand the things that you can get hold of. You, you may not know everything, you may not have access to everything, but there will be other times when you can actually get access to information, get access to tools, right? There are a lot of tool vendors here today that will give you capabilities that get give you more, more extensive abilities to multiply some of the capabilities you're delivering. And then the last one is identify the things that you need. They may not be available today. There may be technologies that you would want to put inside the DevOps process that doesn't exist today. But there's a, you know, there's a, there's a simplistic guarantee that at some point in the future somebody will develop this, or maybe it's you, right? You can see an opportunity in the marketplace, go out and develop it. There will be a market for this kind of stuff. You know, you can, know, you can look at any number you like, you can look at any projections you like, there will be a market for this because software is going to take over the world. Right? Hardware is dying out, generally speaking, and people writing software, etc. I mean, you know, there are guys in Azerbaijan who, are, who have you know, 
cheap computers, etc., writing really cool code. Right. It's going to happen. So the last thing, the last three things are just as a, as a statement I will make. Right? Knowing everything, trying to know everything, trying to get your business to know everything, trying to get your customers to know everything, trying to get your specialists to know everything is not going to happen. It is impossible. Right? You just don't have the people, the manpower, the willingness, etc. There are always these kind of counteracting forces going on. You've got to understand and determine exactly what is relevant to you as an organization, as an individual, as a role. You, know, you can look at this career perspective as well. As a specialist in, in security, what do you want to know? Right? What are you offering to the, to the people that you're working with, to the partners that you work with, and so on? And then the last one is the Im most important one, is you've got to know what matters to an organization at every given point in time. Right? And that will change, guaranteed that will change. Again, in my last role at UBS, you know, I, I, the number of conversations where I was dragged in front of a regulator or the executive board to explain security issues, you've got to understand what is important to your constituent stakeholders at any point in time. Right? And in DevOps world, that is critical. Because in a DevOps world, all, all of DevOps opportunities are about optimization, it's about automation, it's about integration, it's about getting rid of waste and driving efficiency. And if you're not in those conversations as a security person, you're going to get bypassed. Because there will be people who will come to your organization or there will be tool providers out there that can say, well, you don't need a security specialist because I can put an MI tool in the middle of a DevOps system and, and it will do all of that, right? Or I can put a, you know, application testing tools as a case in point, right? A bugbear of mine. People, the number of people who come to me and say, application testing tools, you don't need application testers anymore because it's all automated. You just put this tool in, pays the license fees, and everything will be all right. The ability to eliminate the human from the process hasn't arrived yet. Right? If you're a specialist security guy and you want to get into this space, this is the time to do it. Because you will be in demand if you get the context correct. Right? There are two roles that have occurred inside, well, three roles if you include data. Um, two big roles that have occurred in the enterprise world that are now demanding more money than any other role in any other previous point in history. One is risk. Right? So chief risk officers are now paid more, generally speaking, than almost anyone else per rata in an enterprise of any size. And the second one is security, chief security officers and so on. You only have to look at the FTSE 100 or any other metric you want to choose the number of people who have been elevated as CISOs from somebody in operations, somebody in back office to board level exec or sub level exec, but has the power to make those kinds of decisions. That change has occurred massively in the last 14, 15 months or so. And the last one I just mentioned there was data. There has been a continual role for a chief data officer for a long time, but you're only just beginning to see chief data officer emerge as a full executive function. In those in organisations. Thank you. Um, I actually, I think I've got five minutes. Huh? How much time do I have? Any questions from anybody? No questions. Well, that's the first time I've ever heard that. Actually, I've got a question for you. While we're using that time, put up your hands if people believe that there are more security incidents than ever before. Okay. Put up your hands if you feel that more security incidents are being reported than ever before. Okay, it's interesting. The truth is, you're both right. Um, you know, I've had the privilege of paying for, quite expensively, a lot of extensive research on this point. Um, there's a lot of confusion for security out there, unfortunately. And when you're talking about things like dev, the combination of DevOps and security, uh, it becomes a fundamental problem for a lot of enterprises to deal with, a lot of companies to deal with, and also presents an opportunity if you're in the provider space or in the software space or the services space to address those. Um, most people I talk to who are either in the security space or are buyers of security products and services recognize that they need to prepare more of their allocated budget for security than ever before. Again, give you an example, at UBS, my annual security budget was close to about 23% of my operating budget. Right? And my operating budget was more than five billion. Right. Cool, all right, thank you. <laughs>